morning friends this is Patty Elhoff and I'm going to show you how to take this canvas bag and turn it into this canvas bag using your own napkins or tissue papers and before I go into what I did I did want to mention first of all you can get these in the dollar store some dollar store just dollar stores just sell these canvas bags or sometimes you get them for free you may have a couple on hand and I don't know if you know this, but you can actually dilute chalk paint. So I started out with a mixture of 50% chalk paint and 50% water. Uh, that was a little too thin for me, so I went to about 75% chalk paint and 25% water. People paint furniture with this mixture. So I decided to try it on the bag. It worked perfectly, but I've done this before and I'll show you in the end how long-lasting these bags are. So I'm taking a chip brush. You just want to make sure you're using a bristle brush and cover the whole surface of your bag. If you are going to be working on both sides of the bag, I'm using this one in my car so I'm only going to cover one side of it. But if you're going to be working on both sides, complete one side first and then work on the other and make sure you have parchment paper so that once you iron place the parchment paper down on a surface and place your bag over that so that you don't get the decoupage glue stuck to the surface that you're working on. I found that I did need a second coat and the reason for diluting this chalk paint is not only because chalk paint's a little expensive and this can make it go a little bit farther but the chalk paint becomes a little bit more flexible this way so instead of it being all crunchy or you may worry that it will crack it actually becomes very flexible so I'm just going to cover this side with a second coating of chalk paint and once this dried which it dried really quickly I took my laser print from the graphics fairy and by laser print I mean, I have a laser printer. I sell them on my website because I do a bunch of transfers and I need this ink to be perfectly pure, not run, not bleed. And if you have an inkjet printer, these will run and they will bleed. So I will have over on my website a link to a blog post telling you how you can use several different methods to try to get your ink jets from running or bleeding. So you can head over to the Graphics Fairy and print out whatever one of the transfers you like from their site. Now what I'm going to do is take this graphic and I printed it out in reverse and I'm using the Liquitex Matte Gel Medium also on my website and I found that the matte gel medium does the absolute best transfers. I've used decoupage glue, white craft glue, transfer mediums, I've tried them all and for some reason this one over a laser print color or black and white just seems to really do a great job. So what I'm going to do is just cover and you don't have to get carried away with this but I'm just trying to mainly get a flat finish, flat coat of this gel medium over the transfer and you can go outside the lines that's fine. You just want to make sure you don't have lumps or brush strokes and you can use a sponge brush for this too by the way. And I'm just going to cover this whole transfer with the matte gel medium. And now I'm going to flip it over and of course it's still wet and I'm going to center it right in the center of my bag and I didn't realize I did this upside down. After I realized I did it upside down it was too late it had already started to transfer a little bit so when you see the end product I'm using a different transfer from the graphics fairy. All of the instructions are still the same I just wanted you to know why it's not going to be the same exact transfer but you want to smooth out your paper you can press this down with your fingers you can use a spoon you just want to make sure that because you're working over canvas 
and it's not the smoothest surface. You want to press this down as hard as you can. And you see here, when I realized it was upside down, I tried to remove it and it already started to transfer a little bit. But guess what? I'm not using this bag for shopping. Personally, I am using this in my car. I keep it on the back of the passenger seat so that when I'm driving, I can throw trash out. If I stop to get my latte or whatever and I need to throw the paper, the cup, everything away, it just goes right into this bag on the back of my passenger seat, which I just empty every couple of days. So I'm just going to make sure that this is securely down on the canvas and I am going to leave it dry and come back to it. You can put this in the oven at 170 degrees for about five minutes and let it cool off in the oven. What I mean is when you're done, put it in a cold oven, set the oven to 170 and when it reaches 170, leave the oven on for about another five minutes, turn it off, and then just leave this in there for, actually it's a very short while, this dries so quickly. Now what you want to do is wet your fingertips, and I suggest for this first part where you take off, because you may have to come back and take off a little bit more of the paper, I suggest that you use your fingers to rub this off. Keep a little bowl of water handy, and just carefully rub off the paper. This is why I suggested you only apply the gel medium to the transfer. You don't need to apply it to the whole piece of paper because you see how these large pieces of paper are pulling away from the side. That's what you want. You don't want any paper left on here. You just want your transfer. So I'm going to just remove all of this paper and put this aside to dry again. It's just a little bit wet, so this part might only take 10 minutes. The oven's still warm, so I'm gonna put this back in the oven for a few minutes and bring it out. So you may notice when it's dry that there's still a little bit of paper left on, but for this second part, the transfer is pretty much baked on, it's stained on there. You can now take a rough wet cloth or a damp cloth and go over this because if you do a lot of this, you can really kind of wear down your fingers. It, it gets a little tender after a while. If you're going to go this route in the first place where you use the damp, rough rag or cloth, just make sure you're a, you're a little bit careful with it. Just get the feel for how much pressure you can apply to remove the paper without removing the transfer. And by the way, this is where I decided to flip over and start to work on the side that I'm going to decoupage and that will that you saw in the beginning of the video. So this is the other side and this is the transfer that I used and same thing I'm just going to take away any excess paper that might be left on here. Run your hand over it just to make sure you've got a nice, nice smooth surface before we move on to the next part. And now the whole surface is dry and clear and I am taking some matte decoupage glue. You can actually use Mod Podge for this. Um, I, I really prefer the matte decoupage which is going to become a little shiny anyway. It's just the way it works and I'll put a flat or a matte top coat over it. But my surface is dry. I'm wiping away any pieces of paper and now what I'm going to do is put decoupage glue all around the transfer, uh, even up to the transfer a little bit because I'm going to decoupage over this, but we're using the iron-on method. That means we're going to decoupage, I'm sorry, we're going to apply the decoupage glue and let it dry completely. So I'm going to cover this whole surface with the exception of that center transfer and put this aside to dry. Again, it can go back in the oven. Just don't put the oven over 175 degrees and you'll be fine. So now everything is dry on the bag and I'm taking my napkin and I'm using an aqua brush. You can also use a wet pointed paintbrush and I'm just going to dampen my napkin along the area where I would like to tear it. Now the background color of this napkin, as you can see, it's an off-white color and that is also the background, that's the color of my canvas bag, the chalk paint. So it's going to look like this just disappears right into the bag. And don't separate your napkin until you're all done doing this part. I'm going to tear out the section of the napkin that I'd like to use. 
and I'm taking a piece of parchment paper and it's got to be parchment paper. This is the only one that will protect your project from heat. You definitely don't want wax paper. And what I'm going to do is iron the napkin on. By the way, I have separated the top from the other three plies. And I'm going to place the parchment paper over the napkin. And I'm taking my iron. You can use a craft iron for this or your regular iron. And I am going to iron this napkin onto the now dried decoupage glue because in essence, what's going to happen is it's going to melt that decoupage glue that's underneath. You want to make sure that you have a good solid coat of decoupage glue. Once in a while after watching one of these videos where I do the iron on decoupage, someone will write and say, I got wrinkles or there's spots or spaces where the napkin didn't adhere. That's because you have to make sure you're very generous with the decoupage glue that you put down in the first place. And you'll also want to make sure you iron every single spot. And I'm keeping this video in real time so that you can see. I'm going back and forth over certain areas. I'm putting some pretty good pressure down here. And the cotton setting is on, is turned on for the iron. So it's pretty hot. And I'm just going to keep going back and forth over this. And then I'll show you what happens. You pull away the paper and look at that. Your napkin is decoupaged. It's perfectly dry and it's decoupaged right down onto the surface. And you can bend this, twist this, you can do anything to it and it's not going to come off. We're not done yet. We still need to add another coat of decoupage glue and a top coat to it. But I'm going to repeat this around the bottom and the other side. And here's how this looks now. And to protect it, we want to add one more coat of decoupage glue over the whole surface. So you're going to cover this whole front of the bag, the transfer, the napkin, everything. And you want to make sure your napkin is down securely. If you see any spaces or bubbles, any place where it looks like it hasn't adhered, you can add decoupage glue over top of that right now, just that one area very carefully and let it dry and then come back and do this part. And I'm using a wide chip brush because I'm going to put a decent coat of decoupage glue on here and let it dry, although you can again put it back in the oven. I personally want to tone down the gloss on here, so I am using the Liquitex Matte Varnish. You can use a high gloss varnish, a satin varnish, or a matte. It's all, it all depends on what you would like but you do need to apply a top coat once the decoupage glue is all dry. And again, you want to make sure you cover the whole surface. This final coat is very important for protection. No matter how hot or humid it gets out, this will not get sticky. This dries to the most absolute matte finish I've ever seen. No shine whatsoever, and I will show you that as soon as this dries. This is almost dry, but you can still see that there is almost no shine to it. Any shine that you may see might be because it's a little bit damp. But I also want to show you something. I'm using this in my car. On the passenger side, in the back, I throw it over the headrest and I use it for trash when I'm driving or when I'm parked. In the car, I can throw my trash in here. But uh, in case you're wondering how long lasting these are. I'd like to show you something. I have used these two canvas bags that I did this same process on. I turned the light down a little bit. It's a bit glary. You can see how high gloss this is. I've used these two canvas shopping bags for years and years and they haven't cracked. They haven't chipped. I go grocery shopping once a week and then stop in other stores at least once a week where I carry these bags in whether I just need milk or I've got to run in and get a few things but I use them every week I put my groceries in them and you can see this was for the holidays I use this all the time when I'm bringing food over for to someone's house uh, as well during the holidays for parties but Look how sturdy these bags are, and look how the decoupage, the paint, the top coat, look how everything holds up. So you don't have to worry that you're going to do all of this work 
and within a month or even a year this is going to chip or peel or not be usable or just not look as nice. Look at I can crunch this up, I fold these up, I put them in and out of other bags. I just use these all the time. So it's not only a practical project, it's very pretty, they work great for gifts. And again, here's the project that I worked on this week. That's the transfer that I got from the Graphics Fairy. And that is our video for this week. As I mentioned, I am using mine in the car. And I did want to mention Upcycle with Decoupages on Facebook. If you go over and like and follow the page, you'll be notified every week when I put a new video out, when I put new papers out. I write blog posts every other week, so I notify you when a brand new blog post has come up that will take you again over to my website. And you'll be notified every time I put a brand new YouTube video out too. Thank you so much for subscribing and all of your lovely, lovely comments and compliments. I will see you guys next week with another blog post on my Facebook page. Thanks again, my friends. Bye-bye.